The Acolyte, episode 6. Now, I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to get right into this review, tell you what I liked, what I didn't like. Let's get right into it. This episode overall was kind of a weird one to me. It had hints of what the last couple of episodes had for me, where it's just a short half hour episode. Not a whole lot took place that really pushes the story along in major ways. Obviously, outside of things such as the duel against the stranger as highlights, but overall not a lot of large story beats to really dissect or go into. Everything's pretty straightforward and condensed into these shorter episodes, which again, I'm not very happy about. They kind of bait and switched us with the first two episodes being about 40 minutes, making us kind of think, oh, maybe that rumor isn't true that they're going to be half an hour episodes. And then after that, every episode has been sub half an hour, which is pretty disappointing. I don't see where with a $180 million budget, they can't figure out how to make longer episodes on these Disney Blush shows, not just the Acolyte, some of the Marvel stuff, other Star Wars projects. Very disappointing, and I hope they take note and make longer episodes in the future because I just feel like nothing gets answered in these super short episodes and these super short seasons. These seasons are already only eight episodes long. Half hour episodes doesn't help their case at all. But just a small gripe, again, a short episode where just enough happened to push the story along. A few things about this episode that I liked. I kind of liked the character dynamic from Osha and the Stranger. I forget his actual, like, Sith name, but that's what we're going to go with for now. It was kind of cool to see the twin swap and that now the Sith really doesn't care who he has. He just wants a second. He wants to follow this rule of two. And he doesn't care if it's Osha, May or a random kid he picked off the side of the road, he wants a second in power. So seeing this dynamic with him and Osha, him kind of trying to break into her mind and show her the path to the dark side, while also being like very vulnerable, letting her grab his lightsaber, pause, letting her kind of verbally attack him in a sense that he has to respond with, yeah, I know you don't trust me, but trust yourself, do this, do that. I know you hate me, but think about this, about yourself, which is kind of an interesting way to go about, you know, turning somebody. I don't know if he's really trying to turn her, but I did think their dynamic was pretty cool. While a little bit cheesy in parts, this was definitely the highlight of the episode. Of course, at the end, spoiler alert, just real quick, her putting on the helmets. I think this has led to make us believe that, you know, she is going to join him. She will become his acolyte, this new acolyte after May just dipped or whatever is going on with that. I don't think it's gonna happen, but I will say I kind of hope it does. If they did basically a twin swap, you know, coming full circle with how May started off evil, Osho was kind of the one just laying low in the galaxy. It'd be cool to see at the end May has come around due to whatever soul is about to tell her, and Osha is the one twisted by the dark side and ends up becoming the acolyte in this show. Now again, yes, very cheesy to do the twin swap thing, do the full circle thing, but it could be a redeeming quality of this show if done right. And really, it's not that hard of a thing to execute, so... I'm crossing my fingers on that. But again, that was really my main highlight of the episode. Nothing else really super crazy about this episode. I did kind of enjoy the other group of Jedi going to forget the name of the planet, but where the Wookiee Jedi was, Kelnaka, I believe was his name. It was cool to see them kind of discover the dead Jedi. I wish they would have taken it a little more seriously. The bald green master girl was kind of just like, mm, like, what's going on here? You know, like, it, should have been a little more heartbreaking in my opinion unless they really didn't have that many you know personal connections to these characters then that's fine but she definitely senses something is at play it was cool to see the light whip it was cool i didn't think it was that weird as people are making it out to be but she definitely knows something is at play and i feel like she's going to investigate it really soon even maybe even bringing Saul into the mix as a potential suitor for who did these crimes, he's at least going to get questioned, and seeing him hanging around May could kind of tip the scales out of his favor. Again, we're just going to have to see where they take that. I'm being really hopeful they probably won't execute on any of that at all, but that is that. Now, let's get into the things I really didn't like about this episode, and it really just boils down to one thing that I'm gonna kinda wrap in a bow to make short and sweet here. 
is that a lot of storylines from last episode were kind of lacklusterly. Lacklusterly, is that a word? I don't know. But they were kind of lacklusterly executed in this episode. They left us on the big cliffhanger of the twin swap. Oh my god, May is now on the ship with Sol. He thinks that she is just still Osha, even though that doesn't make any sense and it took him way too long to catch on that it was actually May. He stunned her like way past the halfway mark of the episode. You know, it took her speaking to him to realize, oh, this is not Osha. When I think in reality, if he is as powerful as they tell him to be, he should have sensed it as soon as she came into contact with him, which is one of my gripes leading into this just overall blanket statement is that I really thought more was going to happen with Osha and May on the ship. I thought there was going to be some sort of confrontation. Maybe we're getting that in the next episode. And I really thought there was going to be more of a big deal that these Jedi died. I thought he was going to just straight up go to the High Council, which again, I think they're going to just keep pushing back and pushing back into the coming episodes, which of course is concerning because there's only two episodes left, which is barely an hour of content if they keep on the half an hour mark for these episodes. So that's just my overall gripe with this episode is they needed bigger payoffs for the cliffhangers and where is this going? Again, we're in this unfortunate situation of there's two episodes left, and I don't know where this is going or how this is going to wrap up. And that is that. Those are my thoughts about episode six and kind of going into this back half of the Acolyte so far. Not great. Not horrible. I've been enjoying it. Minor gripes here and there. I hope they pull it together in the last two episodes and have some decent payoffs and don't leave us with too many unanswered questions. But that is all I have to say about Acolyte Episode 6. I want to know what you guys have to say now down in the comments below. Make sure to leave your thoughts, why you like the episode, or why not. I'm excited to read those and get into some conversations in the coming days. Also, while you're at it, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.